What is up, my people? Welcome back to yet another edition of Singles of the Week. I'm your boy, Nassim the Dream. If you are brand new to the channel, just go right on ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell as well to always keep notified on my newest content. And without further ado, let's get right into the new singles. Kicking off this week's Singles of the Week is one of Indy's most loved rock bands, the 1975, with their brand new single, Part of the Band. Based off this track, it looks like the band is going to be starting to focus more in depth into their Baroque pop influences with their music, even a little bit of chamber pop here and there too, but regarding the instrumentation, I think it's gorgeous front to back for the most part. I'm a little bit on the questionable side with the writing on the vocals. The chorus is it's nice, it's angelic, it's sweet to the ears. The verses, however, feel very stale. I feel like a low mix would have been more preferred personally for me, but something needed to be changed overall just because otherwise I think the song is great. It has very good highlights to it. Hopefully they come out with another cut like this that turns out better, but one can hope. Next is this collab from Fabio Foreign and Kid Leroy on Paris to Tokyo. These reimaginations of old 2000s pop tracks into Brooklyn Drill just need to chill out, man. It's just not coming out good in my opinion. This song is not flattering anywhere. It's not good. It's just it's just plain and simple bad. Next is this freestyle we received from Jid on the track 29. Okay, so I'm pretty iffy on the strings with this one. They're just a little bit too wild for me. A little bit too... I don't even know how you even want to put it out there, like abstract or just like going off with trying to be a little bit more experimental or just deeply off-putting and creative in an aspect. It's just trying to be some deep alternative cut that's just not really interesting to me in my opinion. I just think that Jit could have really done so much more with this flow. I mean, like he had a good performance, but it just sounds messy altogether and I'm not crazy for it. But it's got the right idea. Then there is this heavily anticipated collab I've been dying to hear, Nancy Adram and Marshmallow team up on Sasa. For those who don't know Nancy Adram, Nancy is one of the most talented pop vocalists to come out of the Arabic pop music scene, coming out of Lebanon. It's pretty much everything I expected, and for the most part, everything that I wanted. It has that trap style that Marshmallow has been messing around with a lot lately into his verses. I love how he still keeps with the authenticity with Arabic music on here. Overall, the quality is pretty good. The chorus is very catchy. The mix is well cut. I think overall, it's just good. It's good, man. Next is pop singer Elio out with the song Nine Lives. With Elio's form of indie pop and hyper pop brought into this track, it feels something like that would have come out of Charlie XCX's How I'm Feeling Now LP. Granted, they are contemporary, so of course, there's going to be some similarities into their sonic qualities. But overall, I thought the song was okay. I was hoping for more creativity with the design aspect from it, but I'm not complaining. So we got some new slander out this week. This track is called Halfway Down with vocalist Ashley Drake. So I thought Ashley was decent, especially with the coming to the delivery on the pre-chorus. I thought it was really well sung. There is more of a mellow vibe to the track this time around because there's nothing really hard hitting to the extent where this track could really be considered like a heavy dubstep banger. If you're expecting that with this drop, you're probably not gonna like it. I honestly thought it was just okay. I'm going crazy for it. I don't really expect this one to grow on me in the future, but yeah, overall, it's okay. Next is J-pop group Chai's newest single, Hero Journey, featuring experimental pop band Super Organism. This track's cute as fuck. It's, it's like, yo, I caught myself wobbling to this and... I felt soft, very soft. <laughs> but but yeah, this song is pretty great. I, I love what so Super Organism brought to the table. It's very complimentary with Chai. It just very bright, very pink, very fluffy, sweet. I like it. It's a go. And then we got Matt Ox with the song Recoup. Wavy. Very, very wavy. There's hella energy in this one. There's just lots of heat all around in this track. Just dives right into it. Wastes no time. Matt Ox bring in the intensity once again. It's looking good for the dude, man. He's been coming out a lot of promising material let's see it g let's see what you got i'm liking what you got so far next is alternative pop singer lapsy with 32 floors i think this one is fairly exceptional this futuristic layout and the production has great sonic quality the melodies are well made enough to cast its memory it's short and sweet yet simple and satisfying overall I think it's decent. Lapsy has a really good performance on here. I think she sounds very lovely. It's cool. So then we got some new hip hop out with Killer Mike featuring Young Thug. This song is called Run. I thought this track for the most part was pretty good. Uh, I just don't really feel the chemistry between Killer Mike and Young Thug on here. It doesn't exactly feel like a perfect blend with the two. I just, I don't know. 
I don't really have a good taste just with them on here together. It just doesn't really feel linear. It doesn't really feel like it can really coexist. They work well individually on the track. Like I said, they both have decent verses, and it very, very fits well to their vibes, but I don't know. I think if I would have had that, it definitely would have been a fire track, but I'm just going to say it's good. It's a good song. Then we got this beautiful looking team up with this next one, Don't Let Me Go. It's by Dylan Francis with Elenium and Evan Gia. Yeah. Super dummy fire, my guy. Super dummy fire, yo. I'm just going to put this out there. It does sound way more of an Elenium track than anything else, but who the fuck cares? It is so fucking good. Like, this is just great feels music. Like, Evan G is killing it onto the singing. I don't know what it is. Like, every time Elenium touches something, I feel like he works so well with the vocalist that comes present on any track and any other producer. It's just there's great builds on here. I love the design and the production. It, this feels like a firework to me. Like, this feels like a track that I definitely would have loved to hear on the 4th of July. Like, it, it, it feels so explosive. The way, like, these synths and um, these saw waves just blend together onto the chorus. It just, it's just a great spark. It has so much light to it. It's just super bold. It's an A in my book. I love this song. Next is Julian Baker out with Good 3. It's a mellow, somber, acoustic indie track. Julian is playing the part sounding lovely on the track for the most part. What I really love about the song, though, is the way the strings just feel so deep and full when they're plucked into these gray undertones it's my kind of acoustic indie tracks i if you enjoy that kind of music i think you'll really have a good time with this it's very simple it's very to the point i think it's fantastic she sounds great with these acoustics i think they're well mixed just for the two on there some good singer songwriter material then we have another single from brent Fiaz. it is called all mine so the full record wasteland is out right now go check it out if you haven't briefly discussing the single it's a pretty good r&b piece out from brent i'm liking a lot of the magic surrounding his vocal performance this is a good one for the most part and i'm hoping to check out and have this review out soon of the full op so stay tuned then we got this track from country singer keith urban okay so i'm not much knowledgeable when it comes to keith's work i've been meaning to dive into more of his discography to see what the fuss is about but he's indeed a talented vocalist in the case of this track though i'm just not really feeling what's being put on the table it just feels like some regular just generic country tunes i feel like i've heard before and it's just kind of boring to me like i'm sure the fans will love it and if you're hearing my opinion i'm sure you won't like it but sadly i just don't think this track's for me bringing you some more r&b with august 808's newest single with gene aiko water sign i'm liking a lot of the lo-fi ambient sound selections to the song it's just a beautiful track all around gene is doing what she does best she sounds gorgeous on the track it just feels very lush very lovely very profound there's not enough i can say about the song it's, it's just good it's really good you should check it out joey badass hitting us with a yet yeah, another single this time around with more melodic tension for the track the track is called survivor's guild it's guiding us with some more cool meditative sign oscillations under the keys in my opinion so far joey's two for two with these singles uh these are just great cuts like I'm hoping this LP really lives up to the attention that these singles are really diving into mine. And I'm just loving, loving it. I'm loving all the black and white filtering so far. I'm loving all the attention and just gratification and appreciation that is shown to New York. It's a very satisfying chorus. But you know, it's a fire track. Then we got funk electronic dance artist Grizz out with the song Feel No Pain. And yeah, I just don't. I don't care for this. I really don't. It is just not exciting to me. It's not new. It's not fresh. There's a big lack of creativity. I feel like it's just super annoying to hear kind of more shit from them lately like this. And yeah, it's just not good. It's not. I don't enjoy it. I'm sorry. This needs more evolution for me to enjoy it. Pop punk band Boston Manor has a new single out this week as well. It is called Passenger. So it has a hint of melodrama to the tone while still incorporating pop punk elements into the instrumentation. I just wish the structure was more than it is on here i wish it was way more dynamic way more versatile maybe just some more special instrumental passages would have gave more light and essence to the writing um but uh, i think that would have been really well needed for it to be at least a decent track it's just too forgettable and i think those are the traits why i feel like if they were included into the song it would have put it over that that line where it actually would have been kind of a decent track to me but uh, it's just forgettable we got some more brand new indie pop out with indie band easy life and indie pop singer beanie this is a pretty delicate combo of indie pop the creator is on a mix of upbeat drums complimentary pianos and acoustic guitars some great chemistry overall for the performance 
Yeah, it's short and sweet overall, but there's no problems for me whatsoever if I'm going to just break this down really, really quickly. And there's nothing thought-provoking either, but the quality is intact. I don't know. I can definitely see myself coming back to this track. It's nice. It's nice on the ears. I like it. Then we got new West Side Gun out with Derek Bowman. The full record, Peace Fly God, is out right now. Go check it out if you already have it. Delivering some more abstract thoughts over these 50 symphonies. It's all right so far. It's a little slower than some of his other work. And in that case, it's not a bad thing. It's just hopefully included with more value in contrast with the record but um we'll see for that so hopefully stay tuned for that record next up is this new track called change the locks it's by indie singer king princess the songwriting is absolutely amazing here i love the flutes and just how beautifully flustered they are in the presence of these electric guitars this is probably the best track i've heard from king princess overall she sounds wonderful on here the production is just absolutely excellent i love it you should play it Try it out. I'm sure you'll like it. Then there's this new Black Bear track with the song Idea, and the idea is doo-doo. Like, there's just some questionable decisions made with some of the effects used onto the vocals, and it's just gross. Like, this song sucks. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of hearing the same bullshit all the time. It sucks. Please come up with something new, because it's bad. <laughs> Then finishing off this week's Singles of the Week is this brand new single from metalcore band Bring Me the Horizon. The song is called Strangers. There's there's a lot of conflict with me so far with these singles that have been coming out from Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, Ali is doing a great job with this particular track and making his vocals and the pre-chorus all the way to the full chorus. Pretty catchy. I was certainly catching myself tagging along with it. But other than that, there's not really that much on here for me to appreciate. Maybe a little bit of the synthetic work onto the bridge, but other than that, it's just basic. It's it's too basic for their skill set that they've already presented from Amo all the way to Posthuman. And yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling about this so far. I, like, I, I'm kind of nervous about this new record. I just feel like I'm just going to be kind of like hit or miss and just probably think it's mediocre. I'm hoping it adds something that keeps me curious about the quality of this record that will come out. But yeah, I don't know right now. Very mixed reviews. And that is it for this week's Singles of the Week, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, go on and like, share, comment down below. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Down in the description, you see all the links for the tracks I talked about in this video. More videos and also the links on my social media accounts so you can keep up with me on the daily. And I'm going to catch you in the next one. Go.